This week on the Drake Insider. You obviously have a new head coach now and Steps one of the guys that really brings a lot of the energy, really looks for a lot of energy from us guys. The timeline of Drake's bowl history begins in 1946. The city of Fresno, California crashed the New Year's spotlight by bringing the first bowl game to the San Joaquin Valley. No breaks. I can't talk about toughness every day and then not go up and zip line with them. So there was 10 zips and I was terrified in all 10 of them. Students, I want at some point today, when you're walking across campus, Stop for a second, look at your toes, take a breath, and feel this place. It'll be a slow process just kind of figuring it out, but it's kind of nerve-wracking, kind of, and it's bittersweet. I mean, it's, it's hard to think about. You're watching The Drake Insider, a Drake Sports Media production. Welcome to the August edition of The Drake Insider. I'm your host, Michael Admire. This Saturday, football kicks off its first season under head coach Todd Stepsis. Wednesday, I caught up with the new top dog. Go! go, go. Coach, I've seen three themes develop over the last seven to eight months. First being uh, new energy in practice. Second being a revamped approach to nutrition and recovery. And the third, a new offensive scheme. How has the team kind of adapted to those three specifically? Uh, on the field, it looks like they've, they've done a great job, and it looks like they've benefited from all those things. So, you know, if you're just a casual observer, it looks really, really good. Now, you ask them behind closed doors, they make, man, this is really hard. Wow, this is, uh, you know, up-tempo. This is very taxing, but um, I think that, you know, they, they're starting to see the benefits on how they feel on a day-to-day -day basis because um, every day they look like they got a bounce to their step and they're ready to go. Coach, you had one of the top defenses in the country last year. What gives you confidence that it will return to that form and maybe what keeps you up at night? Uh, you know, it, it's it's a great group that's always had a lot of depth. We've been very fortunate to hit on recruiting. We got a lot of really good players, um, very talented uh, across the board at all three levels. And even though we had some guys graduate that we're going to miss, no doubt about it, um, there's guys that are stepping in that um, had smaller roles but still played in the past. And that's something you see all the time if you look at our stat sheets. There's going to be 24, 25 guys making a tackle because we're not afraid to play more than just 11 guys. So that gives me confidence that it's, it's a new group, but they're going to keep rolling. Coach Smith's doing a really nice job of, of keeping the momentum, keeping the intensity, and keeping the fire that they have in their belly. Um, but you, know, you, you never know going into a hostile crowd. Uh, you know, you know, are, are some of them going to maybe freeze up when the lights get bright? But you know, we've given them enough practice, and uh, we, we've had enough energy out here to where um, I, I believe that when the pressure's on, they're going to perform. As you alluded to, North Dakota, a tough place to play. It's a new offensive scheme. What gave you the confidence that true freshman quarterback Ian Corwin was up for the challenge? His just his demeanor. Like I mean, you you can see it um, just as a casual observer. If you don't even know much about football and you just look at um, him out there, you can tell that he's got something. You know, you know, and whether you can describe it with one word, or two words, I don't know, but you know, he's got that just sense of calm to him, um, a sense of confidence um, not arrogance but confidence that you, know, you feel really good about seeing him out there and you know that yeah you know, it, it may not be perfect but you know, at the end of the day he's gonna he's gonna make a play for you and he's gonna help us win some games football's first home game is September 7th the men's basketball team went on a 10-day trip to Costa Rica here's a look at that trip we told them we're going down here to have a good time on this trip uh, this is not a business trip by any means we're going to play basketball, we're going to get out of that way what we can, but we're going to take advantage of being in Costa Rica and seeing all the sights and sounds that Costa Rica has to offer. The greatest part of the Costa Rica trip was uh, everything we did outside of basketball. How many people get to go with their, some of their best friends, brothers, and then experience stuff like that? That looks good. Black one's tough. We got to go to a rainforest. The guys all went ATV in. They went and saw some crocodiles. In the zip lines, going above the trees. 
It's gonna be an awesome day. And then zip lining was probably the main one that they all enjoyed. Oh, zip lining type stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that beautiful view. Coaches were a little scared. I won't be too, too specific about what coaches though. <laughs> no breaks. Can't talk about toughness every day and then not go up and zip line with them. So there was 10 zips and I was terrified in all 10 of them. Smile for the picture. So I did the main one. It was the one where you go upside down. I did that. But the problem was like the next one they said was the fastest one. And the problem was I kept hitting my head on the zip line. <laughs> the orphanage was an eye-opening experience. A lot of people were, were feeling thankful for uh, ex experience in that. It really you know, makes you just like take another look and be like, wow, like we are really fortunate just like where we're at, what we're able to do. <laughs> You know, it was nice to get a couple games here before, you know, the season starts so then we can figure out our chemistry on the court with some of the new guys. Our chemistry and our unselfishness is, is what we want it to be and I thought we played extremely hard and, and we got a lot of guys in. I think our depth uh, was really evident. We were able to have those games but after that, you know, after the three games, we didn't talk about basketball for the next four days. People are really rallying behind this group and this program. and and giving us opportunities to do things that we haven't been or done before, and, and this trip was one of them. Since last May, Drake teams have also visited China, Mexico, and Chile. The Paul F. Morrison Golden Bulldog Award is presented annually to a loyal Drake Bulldog. This year's recipients are Rob and Carolyn Hill. As many of you know, Carolyn recently retired from her post as assistant director of the Drake Relays. So many of you who played such a huge part of the success of the Drake Relays and just made my position one that I just love coming to every day. As Carolyn Hill bids farewell to a place she's dedicated decades, those closest to her made their appreciation known. It seems like a turn of phrase that might be overused, but I've never meant it more than I do when I say it to her that I just can't imagine what I would have done without her. She's really taught me how to do my job from the first day I showed up. Whenever anybody's had any issues, you go to Carolyn, Carolyn gets them corrected. She can take care of it all. I'm just appreciative of her, uh, her service, but also just how much she cared for, not only the relays, but everybody who participated, so just proud of her. Hill had a hand in everything relays related. Really is a workhorse. I mean, she, she uh, always had her head down and was always keeping me on task when the, the deadlines were quickly approaching. And the volume of work that she is able to to uh, accomplish its two or three people's worth of work. When she started 13 years ago, she just picked it up and uh, took it from what, what it was at that point to where it is today, which is one of the, uh, like we say, the America's Athletic Classic. Meetings, she was always there. Extra work, she shouldered the load. And on her first day of retirement, she came in. And I was like, wait, what are you doing here? Uh, but that's a, that speaks to her commitment to the relays and to Drake University. And the prospect of moving on to the next chapter? It'll be a slow process just kind of figuring it out, but it's kind of nerve-wracking. Kind of, it is bittersweet. It is for all involved in the Drake relays. This year marks the 50th anniversary since one of the best seasons in Drake football history, a season that ended in the 1969 Pecan Bowl. Now that inspired us to take a look at Paul Morrison's athletic collection and learn more about the Bulldog Bowl history. At the south end of Drake Stadium, there's a banner. On it, five games from the football past. Names that take you to an era before sponsorship takeover. The timeline of Drake's bowl history begins in 1946. The city of Fresno, California crashed the New Year's spotlight by bringing the first bowl game to the San Joaquin Valley. Organizers planned a halftime spectacle featuring 380 high school musicians, and it had a matchup to equal. The Fresno State Bulldogs hosting the Drake Bulldogs, or as the Fresno locals called it, the good dogs versus bad dogs. The team played with opposing styles. Drake head coach V Green had his famous spread offense that he coined as the loose T formation. The season motto was touchdown, here we come. On the other side, Fresno's defense countered with their own motto, ain't nobody coming through here. The team traveled 2,000 miles by train. 
Even though they were in hostile territory, Drake received a warm welcome from the nearly 10,000 fans. Drake capitalized on six interceptions and a blocked field goal late in the game to capture a 13-12 victory. The memorabilia from this game includes a Raisin Bowl jacket, an original program, and handwritten game notes on the back of stationery from the Hotel Fresno. After becoming the first Iowa school to ever play a bowl game, the Bulldogs were back in 1949, this time in the second annual Salad Bowl. Drake entered the game against Arizona as nine and a half point underdogs, but all week rain soaked the field, making it a challenge for either team to get their offenses moving. By the 2.30 kickoff, the skies had cleared over Montgomery Stadium in Phoenix, Arizona. In front of 14,000 fans, Drake jumped out to a 14-0 lead. Even though the Wildcats outgained the Bulldogs nearly 2-1, it was Drake hanging on for a 14-13 victory. Following the game, a local paper lauded Drake as the dotty and plucky pigskin warriors of Des Moines, Iowa. It wasn't until the end of the next decade that the Bulldogs went bowling again. The 1958 team was affectionately known as the Sun Bowl Boys. Quarterback Roger Lebraska led the nation's fifth-ranked passing attack with 153.9 yards per game. The 35 players left for El Paso on Christmas Day. Part of the send-off committee included Governor Herschel Loveless. He's seen here wearing a hat similar to the one sitting in the archives. The Quacks called the bull trip a nice winter vacation, which included the Sun Carnival Parade. Louisville would best the Bulldogs 34-20, ending their season with a 7-2 record. In 1969, defense led the Bulldogs to the Pecan Bowl. The season was highlighted by several fourth quarter comebacks and a four game road winning streak. Head coach Jack Wallace was quoted saying, they're the dumbest team I've ever coached. They just don't know when they're beaten, so they keep coming back. In the Pecan Bowl, Drake trailed Arkansas State by 22 at halftime, but another comeback fell short in a 29-21 loss. The 1972 season was Drake's second season back in the Missouri Valley since the Johnny Bright incident, and the Bulldogs won the conference title for the first time since 1931. The Bulldogs' defense was led by 26-year-old defensive back and former Marine J.E. Williams. Drake faced Tennessee State in the Pioneer Bowl. The game was featured regionally on ABC and played on AstroTurf in Wichita Falls, Texas. Drake dropped the game 29 to seven. Four decades of football wrapped up in one South End Zone banner. Earlier this month, I got the opportunity to see what it's like to live a day in the life of women's head coach, Jenny Bronchek. Now it's your turn. It's August 9th and the women's basketball team is on summer break. Yet head coach Jenny Bronchek has a full schedule. Good morning. This is one of my favorite things and I just am so thrilled that I get to be part of this day for you because this place is so special and it's so unique. And it's a place that I really hope you get to really get a great feel today. These are my least favorite times of the year where you don't get to be with the team and I really do, I love spending time with them and they give me a ton of energy. Um, and at the same time, it's also nice to be able to step back and you know, take a breath, even though this, this week has kind of been crazy and this month kind of can get crazy. But, um, but I also, I wouldn't do these things if I didn't really love doing them. So students, I want at some point today, when you're walking across campus, stop for a second, look at your toes, take a breath, and feel this place. Actually feel it. Because there's something different and special here. And parents, watch your child do this. Watch your child experience today because there is nothing greater than when you find the absolute perfect fit and you can feel it and you know all the stats are there too. Thanks again and go Bulldogs. A large portion of a head coach's job is to sell your university and your program. This morning, it was first year student orientation. Now, it's welcoming a prospective athlete. What are you thinking then? 
Um, so here at 10, and then I thought, yeah. I honestly thought we'd just start in here. Okay. Hey, Courtney, do you know if they're here? Yeah. They are here? Okay. Sit, down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit yeah. down. Yeah, yeah, sit wherever. Yeah. So. Bronchek spent three hours with the recruit, then it was off to her next speaking engagement. The drive topic? Recruitment. When you first start recruiting in those first few years, you're recruiting on a vision, and you're not recruiting on, okay, now we actually have data points, and now we actually have where you've seen us play multiple times, or you've been able to see us through ESPN, or you've been able to see us, you know, in the NCAA tournament, or... You know, so there's more, um, I think more people are familiar with how we play and what we're doing. Like I speak quite a bit, you know, and yesterday I was in Vegas doing USA basketball. You know, now we're going into young professionals. You know, it's the same stuff. Everyone's trying to seek, you know, how you work harder, how you lead better, how you become, you know, and I never go into it thinking I'm gonna go give advice. I just go into it to say, okay, let's all just kind of talk and commiserate and kind of go from there, really. Can you hear me okay? Okay, I'll talk louder though too. Well, we can Does that help if I talk like that? Yeah. Perfect. All right, we can turn the volume up too. Okay. And I was like, okay, I'm going to speak to CPAs and accountants and like, I need like a good title. Okay, so my father was an actuary and I have one of our assistant coaches, her brother's an actuary. So we're like, we got to put our actuary humor together. I need you. I need actuary humor, so I'm going oh, to, geez. I'm going to, let me find my right. okay, I'm going to do a speech for today, actuaries. well, it's for CPAs and accountants. Have you seen the picture where it's like, find X, and then someone circles it, and says, there it is? I mean, okay, this is like, so, I mean, like, here it is, like, you know, so this yeah. is how, like, we try to make simplicity. Oh, there. yeah. What if I just do that? Yeah and came up with this as the slide, okay? So just go with it. I, we went to the farmer's market and I was like, I just want one picture and it's next to the manhole, you know what I mean? And there's like not even a good background. They won't even look at me. This is my other family. This is my team. I love these guys. And again, they look really nice, but this is normally what they look like at me. We can honestly, we can do whatever we want to do. We can have whatever balance we want to have. I constantly hear that whole idea of work-life balance, right? We got to work first. Right? And you know what? Balance looks different and feels different for all of us. It 100% does. <gasps> okay. You want to hand me a wipe? As a mother of three, this is what balance looks like for Coach Baranchek. A picnic style dinner in the office. Sit down. No, don't even think about it. Sit down. Sit down. Okay, one. No. <laughs> Sit. Okay, you're going to go with Dad then. Do you want Dad to come? Sit down. <laughs> That's not funny. <laughs> After dinner and a short singing break, it would soon be mom's turn. How did tonight's event come about? I. Nice. Nice question there. Um, I have no idea. For it's one, two, three strikes, you're out at the old ball game. I made it a commitment a long time ago where I was like, okay, okay, wait, I think this is where I'm going. I was like, okay, I'm gonna do this so I can just not say no to anything anywhere and I can make sure that, you know, like Drake gets out there and da da da. And although there's still some of that, obviously, because you really want to, you know, like we have a really, we have a really cool thing going, not even just in our program, but just in our university in general. And then I just really found a passion with it. After another full day, it's time for a night out at the old ball game. No. Hi, everybody. No. But even this comes with a caveat. Coach Bronchek has been invited to sing the seventh inning stretch to promote her program as well as a television show. Are you thinking this is funny? Is this a funny? Um, I can totally laugh at myself and I can totally embarrass myself and both of those things are going to have to happen tonight for it to be like slightly successful. Take it away, mask singer. All right. Take me out to the ball game. Take, oh, it's not even ready. To the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and Cracker Jacks. I don't care if I never come back for it's root, root, root for the cubbies. If they don't 
going, it's a shame. For it's one, two, three strikes, you're out at the old ball game. You get to do fun things and you get to be part of different groups and there's just so many, you know, unique things that go on here and so um, I rarely say no and sometimes I probably should. <laughs> Sorry you got to experience all of that. <laughs> I know. I totally blew it. I'm sorry. Come here. And that's what's considered the off season. Thanks for joining us on the August edition of the Drake Insider. Go Bulldogs. Thank you for watching the Drake Insider, a Drake Sports Media production.